Hey guys, Faxinadu here from Pure Chords and we are with the Pure Chords app. In this video I would like to show in depth uh, A to Z explanation how to set everything up. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, explaining how to, you know, from the very first steps, download the app, download and install everything that you need and get it to working uh, inside your DAW. We're going to be using uh, Ableton, Ableton Live for this. So. Um, first thing you need to do obviously is uh, you need to grab the app and once you open the app you'll notice that there are fields for IP address and for port so first of all let's take care of uh, forwarding this port this port 9000 that the app and the server program for the app will be using to this uh, specific laptop uh, most of you will probably be using this behind a uh, home network and so the first thing you will need to do is you will need to go into your router here I'm already inside my port forwarding but uh, usually you will have something like this uh, for example my address 192.168.11 it's very typical for the routing address so find whatever routing address you have uh, log into your router uh, here it's over in the advanced tab. It's just something very simple that you must do. You must go to the port forwarding. You need to find the local IP address for the specific laptop that you'll be using. So the simplest way to do this is to enter start, enter CMD, type in IP config. Uh, I'll have to scroll a little bit upwards and if you look at here, IPv4 address 192.168.118. So this is the private IP within the network of this laptop. So, once I know that, I can close my CMD, go into port forwarding, here I have um, actually a wider range forwarded, I have 8000 to 9000, as long as 9000 is included in the range, you're good to use the app, and of course enter your uh, local IP address. External IP address should already be entered here for you. If it's not, and we'll also be needing it later, um, your external IP address can be found at whatsmyip.com quite simple oops sorry uh, what's my ip.com if you type that in the first thing you will see is your IP address and you can notice that it's the same over here so just make sure you have something like this set up uh, local start port uh, local end port should be 9000 local IP should be what you got from the CMD and your external IP should be what you got from the what's my IP the protocol has to be oh, also external, of course, again, 8,000, 9,000, as long as 9,000 is in there. The protocol has to be UDP. Uh, you don't need to set them on both. You can set them on both, but as long as it's set to UDP, that's okay. And enter any description that you want and enable it, of course. So it's enabled, it's applied. I don't need to apply because I already have it applied over here. Uh, something extra that you can do, uh, you, you might need to do it, I don't know. Uh, but if you want to specifically point to this computer everything, you know, so... You can go into your DMZ host, uh, almost any router will have something like this, DMZ address, and you can choose one um, device on your local network to put in here, and again, put in what you got from the CMD, we are um, number 18 on our local network, so 18 is uh, applied over here. So, once you do all that, you only need to do this one time, you don't need to do it ever again to use the app, uh, you set up your uh, IP forwarding to this specific laptop, which is great, now we can uh, work. So, uh, the, uh, one more thing you should have done, <coughs> is you should have downloaded the Pure Chord server, uh, the address to grab the server is over here, so you don't need to remember it or anything, uh, right over here. Right now there's Windows 32 and 64 bits. Um, hopefully uh, there's going to be Mac and Linux versions as well. So you download the server, uh, install it. There's no really installation, just extract the zip anywhere on your hard drive and you will see something like this, exactly this basically. Um, and then once you do the port forwarding like we did, you can start the server. And now that I've started the server, you notice that I can choose my MIDI devices and I have something here called the Loop BE Internal MIDI. So uh, this is a step actually that you should be doing. So let's close the server a first and first let's look at the virtual MIDI driver. So if you go into Google and you uh, just type in virtual MIDI driver, a bunch of these come up. Uh, Loop BE, virtual MIDI, software, uh, there's more. MIDI yoke, uh, and there's some talks on forums, which one is the best, you can read up on it, choose one for you. I actually really, really recommend it for you because it's useful for a ton of things. Uh, as you can see, this is how my app over here works, um, but this is also a way to communicate in your computer w 
with any two apps, uh, any two programs that communicate, want to communicate with MIDI with each other. So if you want to use some modular, uh, along with your DAW or anything, uh, this is just great. So just grab it one time, install it one time, and you'll have it to go. So in this example, we'll be using Loop BE1, uh, the first one on the list. I just clicked on it, um, go into their website, um, over here to the download section. They have a few products. The one that we need, again, is Loop BE1. Um, there's versions, I think, for Mac and Linux. I'm not sure. Maybe for this program, it's only Windows. But just check around. Find your own, uh, the one that works for you. So this one, uh, Windows XP to Windows 10, 32, 64-bit. So no problem here. We're on a uh, Windows 7 machine. Downloaded it. And uh, I installed it. So once this is installed, again, this is something you do just one time. And I recommend to do it anyway. Run the program. And you will immediately see Loop BE internal MIDI appear over here. So once you choose that, you can turn on the server. Now the server is turned on. Uh, there's one more thing you need to do is go into your DAW. So let's open Ableton right now. And give it a minute. Blah, blah, blah. So this is a pretty old laptop, actually. It's like uh, four years old. It was mid-range, um, mid-lower range on release. Nothing fancy about it. So I'm just saying this so you can imagine that uh, if it works smooth here, it's going to work smooth for you. So once you load Ableton, go into your preferences. This is, again, something you need to do one time. Um, and as you can see, the in if you go into the over here, into, yeah, it's in the MIDI sync screen. All your inputs, uh, you can see on this computer, I actually have uh, another virtual cable installed, MIDI Yoke. So we'll see all your inputs and outputs over here. And you'll notice that the Loop VE internal MIDI, you only have the uh, input. Why is that? Because the output is already hogged by the pure chord server, which is exactly what we want to happen. So just remember to first open the server and only then open your DAW. Because this way, if you open the server and you turn it on, then the server will be taking just the output for this loopback internal MIDI thing. And uh, Ableton will not be able to hog the output, but on the other hand, the input will still be available for, for Ableton. So I turn on all these, uh, whatever, route, remote, sync, track, uh, whatever you need. I always kind of get confused by these. I think, I think you need just remote, but anyways, turn them on. Once you do that, you're done on the PC side. So now uh, you can't see, I open the app. On the app itself, um, Okay, actually, we can we can show it over here. So on the app itself, um, let's go back up. On the app itself, if you go to the second page, um, this is the first page. Click on over here on the settings. Go over to the second page, and you have here the IP address, the port. Again, there's no need to change it. We set up port 9000, so we're all good. The IP address, as you can see here, I've set up my public IP address. Uh, this is um, what you should be using uh, for normal operation, and again. There we go. Uh, what's my IP.com? This is my address. So input this into the app. Once you've set it up all like this, um, you can go into Ableton. I'm going now into the app. And let's uh, enable some MIDI channel. And I'm on my second page. I'm going back to the first. Yeah, there we go. So now I went back to the first page of the app and I'm playing MIDI notes. Um, and we can, for example, uh, show that. Let's take, I don't know, some slider from Ableton. I'm going to move one of my uh, sliders. As you can see, uh, immediately it caught on to slider number one. Close the MIDI settings, and now moving slider number one will uh, move the slider on Ableton. So as you can see, um, it's really smooth. Uh, there's no problem to get it to work. The second time that you want to do it, uh, all these steps, you know, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. You don't need to download anything here. So you don't need anything, basically. Uh, just remember to the, the procedure is to first open the server and only then to open Ableton. That's the, that's the major thing that you need to, to remember once you have it all set up. So it's really easy, and I hope this video uh, kind of um, made it clear for you guys how you can use it and how easy it is to use this thing. And I hope you understand how revolutionary this is because of the setup is really easy and only needs to be done one time uh, as opposed to, you know, fiddling with OSC and OSC to MIDI and everything like that. The server does everything for you and the app is immedi immediately available to you uh, once you open your DAW, you know, so it's really great.
Uh, for any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm here, and I will always be updating any problems, so uh, get in touch and grab the app. Thank you, guys. See you later.